with another Saturday edition of Sensible's free workshops on option trading. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll just wait for a couple of uh, minutes to ensure that enough people have joined in. I can already see the chat pouring in. Let me just put out a tweet saying that this thing has begun also. Uh, so today's workshop, we'll first start with option strategies and then we'll start with the whole you know, forming a view primarily because forming a view is a daily exercise we do in Kya Lagra market every day. And I think most of you are familiar with uh, my thought process, but I'll give a comprehensive rundown of that if time permits. Today, we'll keep a strict two hour cutoff. So by 12.30, uh, you know, if I'm not stopping, that's your time to throw virtual tomatoes and <laughs> what, right? Uh, let me just, uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, put the share link. Share, share, share link. Yep. Uh, I'll just go to my Twitter and pick up this thing and put out a reminder again. And then we'll start, right? Uh, starting now. YouTube is such a complicated business, I tell you, because uh, uh, one second, I'm just typing this thing out and putting a Twitter alert saying that we have started and start right after this. You know, mostly uh, <clears throat> we don't uh, always start anything on time, uh, you know, in this part of the world. So I'm just, uh, there's something we should really do something about, you know, because so even when I was in a Southeast Asian country, what they they are always on time. It's crazy how time punctual all these boys are or girls are. So so anyway, let's get started with uh, today's edition of the free workshop. Today's uh, uh, most uh, important thing which we will do is we'll figure out. Uh, see, everybody understands options at some intuitive level, right? But uh, see, the fine print of what you do really has like a significant impact of uh, on your trading. So I'm not going to say that if you understand option strategies at a very good level, you will become 100% profitable, right? See, if you can't predict the direction, it's going to be very difficult no matter what you do. But choosing the right option strategy versus choosing the wrong option strategy can easily have a 30 to 50% impact on your pain. At least that's what I am uh, realizing over time. And I'll also give you some live examples of how I chose one particular thing instead of another particular thing, etc. Sanjay is asking Hindi. Sanjay, uh, Sagar is preparing a Hindi version of both these webinars, sorry, workshops very soon. So, you know, so that is coming uh, very, very soon. So you can wait for it and Sagar will be there with us. So let me just start with this, which is uh, option strategy, right? So So the primary driver of which option strategy to choose fundamentally comes from the fact that see everybody who starts trading right they believe this is reality that is there are three market views either market will go up or market will go down or market will stay flat i mean this is correct right this is in a way correct so and uh, uh i can understand where this is coming from a lot of people do believe that this is a reality so it's a very simplistic worldview right it is just like a there's a very simple car and it has a steering and you know gumao that is what it essentially means right but is that what it is is the first question right uh, so i have covered this topic two three years back in another webinar so the first five minutes will be repetitive if you have watched my two three year old webinar now but then that's not it right if you really look at it, so this is the so this was the driving wheel of a simple car. This is the driving wheel of a Formula One car. Uh, so market can be will go up. It can be a little bit of going up. It can be a little. Uh, it can be a lot of going up. It can be a little bit of going down. It can be will stay here. It can be will not go up. Will not go down. It will be going down a bit. Going down a lot. So you know right off the bat we know that there are one two three, four, five, six, seven, around seven odd ways of, uh, there are seven odd ways of, uh, you know, um, doing this, right? But then is that it or is there more to this is a question which we can legitimately ask, right? And here's the problem. It's not just this. It can also 
it ha- also has a variation of time will it happen in one day will it happen in one week will it happen in one month short term medium term long so it is complicated right there are 21 odd market views you can form based on what's your uh, <clears throat> you know dimension and what is your uh, what's your direction what is the amplitude of the direction and what's the time duration of direction so as we can see this is the fundamental thing you have to understand about which strategy to choose and see if i think tomorrow market is going to rally up 200 points there is one strategy if i think next week it is going to rally up it is there's a different strategy and if i think three weeks you know uh, you will have an entirely different strategy right and whether you which strategy you choose can dramatically affect your pnl in fact you can have a right direction and the wrong strategy and still lose money which is why we have to be very particular about which option strategy we choose and a lot of people think that so i'll tell you a funny story right long time back i was in a uh i so 2017 when sensible only had one broker i went to a second broker who was the ceo of a large bank broking firm in india so i told him ki you know sir we want this thing yes yes hey there is this uh, software you t- it helps you choose the right strategy and he actually asked me ki bro listen if market is going up you will buy a call if it is uh, going down uh, you will buy put anyway buy call is the same as sell put what do you care right i was actually stunned there is actually an adjective before stunned which i am go- not going to use on public tv but but it actually happened to be right so the so at one point right i thought it was very obvious uh, whatever i i am teaching but uh, ravi kumar is saying no view, uh, no voice ravi that's not true everybody else is you know uh, hearing it so at one point i thought ki yaar what is there in option strategy is so obvious that's how i started 2017 Then I realized, okay, a lot of people don't really know option strategies. That's a problem. Five years into sensible, I'm like, maybe I don't completely understand options. And every day is learning, right? So one of the reason, uh, yeah, simplicity that would be. Correct. So one of the reasons why I still trade a little bit is because every day I uh, trade, I learn something new, right? And I, I kid you not, right? Yesterday I learned something new. Day before yesterday I learned something new. It it happens, right? So so. so which is why i mean anyway uh, going back to it it is important that we understand which strategy to choose so so basically if you add all of this basically you are not in a normal car you are not in an f1 car you are basically <laughs> trying to do this right so so uh, let's not be like this let's try let's exactly understand what we are doing and that's our mission for today's uh, option strategies webinar right so i'll tell you the meta right by meta i mean the meta thought of how exact what is the thought process which should drive your uh, selection of option strategy one is how big or small is the move you are playing for is it like a big move which we talked about right obviously first direction comes then the magnitude of the move comes then you have to ask yourself boss when is this move going to happen do you think it is going to happen today do you think it is going to happen after an event if you think two weeks later there is rba policy and you are buying call options today then you are in for trouble if you think three days later there is rba policy and then you are buying option today that's also wrong so ideally you should write down ki boss mere ko lag raha hai upar and i think 300 bp point upar and i think it is going to happen in after three days from now and the move will happen between the third and seventh day from now and this is very important okay you can't say ki yaar do hafte mein kahi to jayega chalo main kuch kar leta hu and then then after you have chosen you know what is the move how quickly do you expect this move and what's the max loss you are willing to uh, the next thing you have to ask is what's the max loss you are willing to take so here's the thing right i, I i'm just going to thoda digress into philosophy see everybody asks what you want like so i, I this is my second startup and people always ask ki yaar tumhe kya chahiye you tumhe paisa chahiye you know etc but ultimately when you're starting a business you're starting trading you're embarking on a journey another way to look at this what pain am i willing to bear what am i ready to give up once you are very clear this is what you are willing to give up right then also your choices are very obvious now the the trading philosophical equivalent of that is what's the max loss you are willing to take before you take every trade right you have to understand that boss this is my max loss and i'm going to make peace with it you know that's it right and then comes okay given this is the max loss what is the 
risk reward you are willing to take right and then comes the probability of profit uh, ravi i understand that you are saying the voice is not audible but there are roughly 1300 or people on this webinar uh, if others are also hearing not hearing my voice clearly i am very happy to look at my uh, audio setup right and finally you have to choose okay what are my chances of winning so basically what am i willing to give up right what is the risk reward that i want what is the, what am i willing to give up and what am i going to make for what i am going to give up and finally what are the odds what are my chances of being profitable these are the three three you know key parts of so see these this is ob obviously the market view right this is something you can't control this is something you can't control but given you choose these three that is direction magnitude and uh, time there are three things you can control your max loss your reward by risk and your probability of profit these are the things which we can control the first three are things which we can't decide but we can get better at it with technical analysis and data interpretation and all of that this will be covered in another webinar today we are going to do and this is a tough part right this is the tough stuff this is the so this is a really really tough thing like figuring out what the market will go when it will do no matter see sometimes right i sometimes keep personally wondering did i actually predict or did i just get lucky because there is a 50 50 chance of being correct at any top point right so so yeah you get into serious self doubt like that uh so this is easy because we'll teach that to you in this webinar and this is something you can learn with enough uh, you know time spent in the system the other thing is of course tough this makes you a good quant or a trader or a strategist this makes you a wizard and a billionaire <laughs> right <laughs> so it's easy to be a good uh, oh yeah my twitter logo is covering the subject thank you i'm going to remove that i'm going to remove that yeah uh hide to what's this hide i think i'm just going to delete this right hopefully it's gone okay so i i hope the twitter logo is gone because i just delete it so Okay, so now we'll start with the most basic. Yeah, your Twitter logo is not going away. Not sure what to do with this. It's not going away. Overlay. Oh yeah, I think hide. Sure. Yeah, got done. Twitter logo is gone. All right. Uh, so, uh, but then the sensible logo is also gone. Okay. Anyway, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the important things. So, first comparison we'll do is an elementary comparison. I know everybody knows this, but it is necessary for beginners to build on top of this. Everything which we will start depends on this. So, I am going to uh, start with uh, uh, builder. So, I mean, you know, last uh, webinar we did not look at uh, sensible even once. Unfortunately, this webinar is full of you know. uh uh unfortunately this webinar is going to be full of sensible right so <laughs> but unfortunately i can't really demonstrate this without a strategy builder and the comparison so okay let's start start with very, very simple thing so i'm going to start with a question right market is going to go up around 100 points in the next 2 weeks what are you going to do this is my problem statement right and i don't have the answer to this problem statement i am also creating this problem statement now so i'm going to put two options right it is 2 weeks so i'm going to put 22nd june expiry i'm going to put buy call and i'm going to put sell put right buy call and sell put this is the most elementary comparison everyone has right should i buy a call and sell a put so i'm going to magnify the screen a little bit forget the payoff graph the uh, you know sorry when i magnify the screen something is happening okay this is the max i'll go without you know really uh, making the font too tiny okay 
So first thing is the comparison between a buy call and buy put, right? Now straight off the bat, everybody knows that call has maximum profit is unlimited. And like you can see in this payoff diagram and the put has a limited max profit, right? Everybody knows that there's no, there's no, there's no uh, question about it. But the question you have to really want start with asking is, look, there is an unlimited max profit theoretically. But is that going to really, really happen? That is the first question you have to uh, start asking. So let's start with that question. So let's say that it's going to be like a two person move in the next two weeks, right? So most people, when they think market is going to go up buy call option, right? So let's realistically put some color on it. And I'm going to say that market is going to go up two person in the next two weeks on both cases, right? And I'm going to do market is going to go up 2% in the next two weeks. And I'm going to relax my time to June 15th. Sorry, this is not June 15th. This will be June 22nd because two weeks. This is also June 22nd. And I'm going to put the days to expiry to max. Right. So now comes the first question. At when market, so this is great. The call made around 11,000. The put made only 5,000, right? This is so far so good. The call is the right thing to do if you're expecting a movement like this in two weeks, right? How about 1%? Now you can see the call option only made 1,700, whereas put option made. Uh, Sorry, I'll just put the expiry again. Put option made 5,000, right? So the catch is, although there is a prospect of unlimited profit in call options, it is not necessary that that unlimited profit wala move will come, right? And the catch is, if that does not happen, then it's not necessary that you cash out the entire call. In fact, call might even be suboptimal. So, I am just going to say this, this is for beginners. See this unlimited profit car prospect does not often materialize simply because it's not going to really go to 19,000 in two weeks or something, right? It's going to be 1%, 2% realistically. So you always have to make an allowance for that. And this is extremely important. The first thing to understand is uh, a call option. Everybody says max loss on profit unlimited, but before you jump in, you have to realistically assess, okay, what's the kind of movement which is going to happen and what is the timeline I'm expecting, right? And without it, it is going to be very tricky. That is lesson number one, right? Now let's look at the other metrics. Of course, everybody knows that max loss is unlimited for puts and max loss is limited for call options. That's everybody knows this. That's very basic. Uh, reward to risk, right? So I talked about R by R, right? So if you look at reward by risk for a call option, technically the reward by risk is very high, right? But realistically, if you look at it, uh, you always have a stop loss, right? So if you are going to stop loss for a reasonable number, uh, again, the call option might not be as attractive as you think it is compared to selling the put. So let's just uh, go to uh, some other things. So what really defines option trading, right? is this number which most people pay for most option sellers pay for which is probability of profit in case of uh and then there is this number which is break even right so i'll tell you the quick connection between break even and probability of profit so first of all if it was not obvious to you so far every buy option has a probability of profit of less than 50%. Every buy option, right? Has a probability of profit less than 50%. Why? Because you have to recover some premium to make money. So you will technically never find a buy option buy, which has, whether it's call, put, it doesn't matter. It always has a probability of less than 50%, right? So buy, because I have magnified my screen, this is behaving weirdly, my pen, less than 50%. Whereas every sell option, every sell option across the board, they all have a probability of profit 
of greater than 50 percent pop greater than 50 percent now that is because if you buy this option which is so i'll just change it slightly i'll make it 18 uh 600 put and i'll make this 18 600 call <laughs> See, for 18600 call to make money, the break even is at 18733. It's almost 1% away. So you need a 1% movement in your favor to make money off the buy call, right? Whereas in case of sell put, even if you uh, get it wrong by half a percent, you're making money. So the probability of profit is, of course, more than 60% because you're right. You're making money when you're right. You're making money when you're when it is neutral, you're making money even when you're slightly wrong. Whereas in case of a buying an option, there's only one way in which you make money. That is, you have to get it right before the end of expiry by 1% at least. Even then, you have to recover that premium. So it is going to be so. So when do I make 5,000 rupees? Because the put option sell, right? It's going to make 5,000 rupees, uh, 6,000 rupees in this case. For me to make 6,000 in the buy call, I probably have to go... I need a movement one and a half percent almost in my favor, right? So I'll just quickly summarize the, you know, meta. In a call option, the max profit is high. The max loss is low right this is simple part please uh, you know bear with me because there are a lot of beginners here we are going to slightly increase the ante up the ante slowly this is obviously low max profit but very high max loss reward to risk is high in call option the reward to risk is low in put option why because very big risk right it is unlimited risk therefore no matter what the reward is it's always going to be low return on investment is going to be high for call option. Why? Because it doesn't have margin only premium. Return on investment is low for put option because you're going to lock up a lot of margin. So if I buy a 5,000 rupee call option, it's only going to cost me 5,000 rupees. But if I sell a 5,000 rupee put option, I need 1 lakh in my account as margin. Now, like we said earlier, it is very difficult to break even on buying a call. Why? Because you need a big move in your favor. That is, if you say it will go up, in case of a call, it has to go up, right? But in case of a put option, it doesn't have to go up. It can either go up or it can stay neutral or it can little bit, it can go down. All of this is fine, right? So break even is easy in case of put option. Uh, selling, so option selling, break even is easy. Focus on the sell part, not the put part. Probability of profit is low. Why? Because breaking even is so when do you make profit when you break even, right? So if breaking even is difficult, then probability of profit is low. When breaking even is easy, the probability of profit is high. Finally, we come to premium. Yahape, you're obviously paying premium for buying an option. Yahape, you're receiving a premium. Now, all these three things are connected, right? An easy break even happens because you're receiving premium, which serves as a question and your probability of profit is uh, going to be always high when you have an easy break even when you receive a premium and also for sell option please remember pop is always greater than 50 percent it's always always greater you can play around with any option you want any strike any expiry you'll always find that pop is greater than uh, this thing okay so I'll again summarize this meta. When you pay the premium, the reward by risk is high. When you pay premium, your reward by risk is going to be very high. When you receive premium, the reward by risk is going to be low. But look, if somebody is, if you're paying money, right, you get better reward by risk. I mean, kind of a law of the world. When somebody is giving you easy money, the reward by risk is going to be low. Think about it like insurance, right? See, when you are buying insurance from, you know, uh, ICICI Lombard or HDFC Ergo or Max Bupa, their reward by risk is actually, your reward by risk is actually very high because you are paying what, maybe 20,000 uh, premium every year. 
and in case that hits you are going to end up getting a payoff of you know if i'm i'm thinking of a health insurance policy here maybe around 20l cover so basically this is like option buying right you are paying premium your reward risk is very high but your roi is also high because 20000 pay you are getting 20l but the think about it so i am going to write this as icici lombard right insurance person not going to write bajaj finance <laughs> because they don't stop calling me so icici lombard low uh, roi is low why because they are just getting your 20000 chiller but here's the thing right for you to make money on this health insurance and i hope you never make money on your health insurance the probability of profit is extremely low right and obviously you are paying the premium but for icici lombard every year it's like are acha ho usko kuch nahi hua i got the premium very high probability of profit good stuff in fact for all you know you know icici direct ka shareholders might be going to you know uh temples mosques church etc every uh we can praying for your health so <laughs> so it's basically this meta so this is the simplest meta of option trading there's nothing complicated here it's very very simple this everybody understands i hope everybody knows this but please keep it in mind because this is the principle on which we'll build every subsequent slide which involves spreads and everything right so i'll just in, uh, introduce the impossible trinity here right the impossible trinity is see there are three things at play one is you have a probability of profit we are going to call it pop then you have a possibility of max loss then you have a possibility of how much is your max profit see here's the thing right one of my friends used to say there's another impossible trinity his impossible trinity was something you love something you love doing sorry something you love doing me eh? sorry 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 not love doing i am so sorry something exciting then there is something uh, legal and there is something that uh, pays you well he used to say that you can choose two of this you can't choose all three so if it is legal and it pays well it won't be exciting if it is legal and it is exciting then it won't pay well if it is pay, paying very well and it is very exciting chances are that it won't be legal similarly this impossible trinity you can choose any two if you want to increase your max profit and reduce your max loss you're going to reduce your chances of profit and i'll illustrate that to you by you know modifying the moneyness of an option atm itm ot etc but basically you have to understand that you can't increase your max profit plus reduce your max loss and decrease your chance of profit if you want to increase your max profit and reduce your max loss you are going to take a hit on your chances of profit right again if you go back or to our call and put this is exactly what it says you want a good risk reward then then your probability of profit is low you want a high risk reward uh, high probability of profit then your reward by risk is low so i can further summarize this into one slide basically reward by risk and for those of you who studied high school math reward by risk is inversely proportional to probability of profit basically you want a better payoff you have to sacrifice your probability of profit you can't do both right so this is the first meta lesson so we still haven't gone to uh, you know specifics of strategies but every strategy every strategy you learn ultimately depends comes to this what do you want do you want to increase your rr or do you want to increase your chances of profit and this is a question every day day in day out every time i am creating a strategy i mean you see, you see my trades for the last 90 odd days every time i am doing this this is the only thing i am talking about profit po- probability max profit max loss or i can even summarize this to reward by risk so in this case it is a trinity but i can also make it a uh, what's that called dichotomy 
the dichotomy of whether you want RR or whether you want POP, right? Now, basically, which also means, so obviously POP, break-even equal to POP, right? POP and break-even are connected. In fact, break-even is the only thing that determines your POP. And that's because everybody assumes, nobody knows what's the market direction. You always assume that there's a 50-50 percentage chance of uh, right. And the farther you go to break even, the lesser your pop, right? So basically, if you have bought an 18600 call, your uh, if your break even is at 18600, your pop is, so I'll just write it down, 18600 CE you have bought, right? If your break even, then your break even is roughly around 18700, your probability of profit is somewhere around 40%. If you bought an 18700 CE, your probability of profit might be something like 18750. That will be something like 30 percent and you know and so on and so forth right so basically your probability of profit reduces as in when you go more and more far to break even so farther break even lower pop right so break even and pop are kind of inversely proportional right so reward by risk is inversely proportional to break even also so you want a uh, you want an easy break even then you are going to not have good reward by risk Right. So RR. So I like saying reward by risk. People do risk by reward. Somehow I like having the good stuff in the denominator. So reward by risk is inversely proportional to break even. You want an easy break even, you will get a poor reward by risk. You want a good break, you want a you want a good reward by risk, you have to go for a far away break even. Case in point, if you sell an option, it's easy to break even, but your reward by risk is poor. If you buy an option, uh, your break even is difficult, but your reward by risk is usually spectacular, right? So this is uh, a good reward by risk involves so break uh, easy break even equal to sell option means bad RR reward by risk, not risk by reward is important. Uh, tough break even. equal to buy option equal to great RR. Right. So this is also clear. Then we'll move to next uh, this thing. Okay. So now, now that we have established that we will talk about ATM, OTM and ITM from a buying perspective and see what is happening. Right. So let me just go to uh, somebody saying option curve failed my god dude dude like honestly I consider myself an incredibly average person in, in the option knowledge uh, like my classmates who studied with me were spectacular in college so I would not claim anything here because I've seen I've had the luck of being with some extremely smart people and after being with them I find it like offensive to call myself smart so <laughs> Oh, anyway, I know we are not doing the fake humility act. My God, I'll tell you what, right? So I had a classmate in the IMA. He was my next door neighbor. Uh, uh, so I was in 603. He was in 602. He was the topper. He was a gold medalist in IMA. He was a gold medalist in IIT. Bhai sahab used to study like two hours hardly a day. Right. Of course, when he's studying, he's in full focus. Even if you knock on his door, he won't open anything. But other, otherwise, he's chilling. And he used to, so I, I still remember, right, in our finance two, his grade was 4.3 out of 4.33. And the second highest grade was something like 3.6 or something. I mean, in, in terms of, you know, uh, real life, it's like your topper is at 100 marks and your second rank is under 80 marks. It's like that kind of a crazy, right? so when I was studying in undergrad, I had, you know, uh, seen toppers and I was like, yaar, chalo, main thoda fight mar loga, iske type ban jauga. but in, in, in the in my post grad I realized ki, dude if even if I study 10 hours a day and this guy studied two hours a day there's no way I am catching up with this guy right so <laughs> it's crazy but but anyway so let's go to uh, uh, this thing uh, option strategy builder so now our mission is very simple we are going to compare three options if you are on PC it's better because 
you know there's a lot of stuff going on around this screen all of which are numbers you but i'll try to magnify it as much as i can but still there are going to be limitations if you watch it on a phone so obviously we are going to load a by call on all three right so all of this is by call identical strikes 18550 18550 18550 for now and then we are going to multiverse is asking what is he doing now he is a hedge fund manager somewhere in hong kong uh, and uh, yeah <laughs> like uh, yeah, i think he is an option trading interest rates and bonds hedge fund manager uh okay but our second gold medalist also is an option trading person in one of those banks which whose name i shall not say because <laughs> anyway uh, uh so so i'm going to do three things right i'm going to look at an option which is otm ipm and atm and i'll tell you what's the practical application also so look at 18400 so i'm going to do three options 18400 call 18600 call this is our atm and i'm going to do 18800 call 18800 call three calls 18600 uh, 600 and 800 right uh, so first point is see 8400 call uh, obviously has the highest loss right it has 10000 rupees loss if you make a max loss right again the max loss is very high 10000 pop is 45 So let let's do takes one by one right this itm option is very expensive it is 10000 rupees the otm atm option is cheaper it is like 4000 rupees and the otm option is super cheap less than 1000 rupees yolo 900 rupees right you can see what i'm circling it is 900 rupees only so basically an itm is expensive otm is kind of there uh uh atm is kind of there otm is very cheap right now the catch of course is uh that is the uh, and profit is unlimited and all right now let us put a realistic target to see which one makes more money now if you look at a nifty move and let's assume that nifty goes to 18900 right okay? so you know what everybody gets to party 18000 or let's say nifty goes to 19000 yeah let's live a little Right, two and a half percent move, very ambitious. But for this scenario's illustration only, we'll put Nifty goes to nineteen thousand. And I'll tell you where this thing leads. Right, some things are obvious, but some things are not. One thing, of course, is the ITM option. Actually, if you're doing going to trade only one lot, there's no question that ITM makes the most amount of money. so i'm going to write the profit of this this actually made around 20k 19346 we'll roughly say uh, 20k profit right the itm made 20k i'm going to write big numbers here because i know the other numbers are small and i'm going to make it itm itm 18400 made 20k on a single lot now let's look at atm ATM eighteen six hundred made sixteen k correct sixteen k it made and OTM made uh, how much did it make ten thousand. and this is uh, 18800 right so obviously if you are going to trade a single lot it's very tempting to think that boss ye to obvious hai itm karte hai 10000 rupees pe you make 20000 right 
ISME, it is around, I'll make it 4,000 rupees. So I'm going to put the how much you spent in the denominator. So ISCA cost in blue is, uh, I'm, I'm going to draw on the graph because the graph is useless. 20,000 ka profit on a capital of 10,000. Correct? This is 16,000 ka profit on a capital of 4,000. And what is this? 10k ka profit on a capital of just 1000. Right? I'll just rough 900 kar de de yaar, right? So obviously the reward by risk here is only 2x. So for every 10,000 10, rupee you deploy here, you only make two times. The reward by risk here is 4x. For every 10,000 rupee you deploy here, you will make 40,000. The reward by risk is just spectacular here. 11x for every 10,000 rupees you deploy here, you can buy it at another, right? So, so obviously you will, the max loss is lower for ITM, you know, RR is poor for ITM. Uh, max, you know, this thing is uh, somewhere in the middle and OTM of course is very low investment and, you know, chappad fad ke return. This is what most people do, by the way, option buyers. But where is the catch here? The catch here is that we assumed a very generous movement here of, you know, 19,000. But if market goes only to 18,000, say, 800, then the catch is, or let's say 18,700, we'll make it 18,700. Then the catch is, at 1800, this thing may, still makes, so I'm going to start this 18,700 in a different color. This thing makes 4,000 at 18,700. This thing makes, uh, sorry, I'll just, this thing makes, uh, Only 2,000 rupees at 18,700 and the other thing obviously loses money at 18,700. Why? Because 18,800 it lost 1,000 rupees. And why is that? That's simply because of probability of profit. Right? So basically OTM is something which you play for a very big move and you are expecting a good RR. So, see, if you are sure of 19,000, you should not put 10,000 in this uh, uh, ATM or ITM. You should go put 10,000 in the OTM. You will make 11 times the money. You are not going to. So, sometimes, right, some spectacular moves happen and they have to be played with OTM. Spectacular breakout equal to OTM game. Spectacular breakout have to be played with OTM. So I'll just summarize uh, this point. Let me just uh, stop sharing and I'll just go back to sharing the PPT. So if you look at uh, ATM, OTM, ITM, the ITM gives you higher max profit per lot, right? Obviously it does because it breaks you earlier. But this is, you can ignore this because it's just per lot. Per lot is not how we calculate, right? We calculate ROI based on number of this thing, in, number of uh, amount of money invested. This is low. This is medium, right? But let's just ignore that. The important thing starts here. The important thing is that max loss, which is one variable you optimize for, is the lowest in OTM, right? It is medium in ATM. It is high in ITM, right? Reward by risk is very high for OTM. We just saw that, right? In a big enough move, reward risk is high. So I'll just put a star here to say in a big, big enough move. This is medium. This is low. This is not very nice. ROI is very high for OTM. It is medium for ATM. It is low for this thing. Uh, breaking even is difficult for uh, OTM because why? Far away, right? And relatively easy for ITM. Obviously, the probability of profit is high here. So basically, right, 
OTM is something you play for spectacular moves at very OTM equal to spectacular move move and big RR which obviously means when you bet OTM you only need to bet small amounts because the return you are looking at is something like 11x Ab 5000 do, 50, whereas ATM is something you do normally uh, the good thing is good pop see mostly unless you know something very good like a breakout ka insider info or something OTM will go to waste but if you buy ATM it's a good pop and you can keep some kind of a medium bet size Matlab, aap agar isme, if you put uh, 1000 you will get 10,000 isme you will get 5000 you will get 10,000 right basically 5000 to 10,000 this is uh, 11,000 for 10,000 so basically this is like 10x this is like 2x right uh, or you know maybe 2 to 2 to 5x right that kind of a stuff normally this is something you have to rarely use with limited bet size because even if bet size is small, your RR is so big that you will print money on this thing, right? Uh, ATM is something which you might want to use, you know, majority of the time. And finally, ITM is not something you use at all. I'll tell you why. It's actually better to buy a future than play an ITM. I mean, ITM option, I know people who play ITM option and I'll also give you a very specific use case for when to trade ITM. Let me, let me do that right away, right? See, I'll tell you the key meta, right? ITM is almost like buying a future. So, or, or let me just illustrate that after clearing all of that. And I, I'll just illustrate this with option G, right? So let's say, so if you look at an ITM option, right? 18,000, 18,000. See, how, how much is the profit? Uh, so I'll just, uh, so the profit here reads 5,000 rupees, right? Now, if you put if you if i move 10 points here right so now the profit reads 5000 rupees for an itm option i mean this is uh, sorry let me just reset that and make it zero so i have now loaded an itm option my slightly i'll increase my now the profit is roughly zero Right. Now I'm going to go 10 points above, right? For 10 points, I have gained 500 rupees for an ITM option. 10 points in an ITM option equal to 500 rupees. That's exactly what you make even from a future. Right? Deep ITM. I'm saying very, very deep ITM, right? And that is, you can see it in Delta here. This Delta says 50. It means that for every point, you make 50 rupees for every point move in this thing you make 50 rupees oh sorry 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 i just realized i'm not sharing my screen sorry 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 i'll just go do the whole thing again yep thanks anup anup pinged me then i realized i was not sharing my screen i'm so sorry you had to look at my face for such a long time oops okay so again back to this so the screen is visible now right Sorry, sorry, sorry. We, yeah, Anup, please cut this part where I have just, you know, this is uh, hilarious. Uh, my screen has gone black for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, are we back? Okay, so this is a ITM option, right? 18,000 call is an ITM option. And you can see that the, the profit so now you can see I don't make any profit on this. Now I'm going to increase it by 10 points. 
when I moved uh, underlying by 10 points on an ITM option, I made 500 rupees. <laughs> right? Now, what it means is that, and you can also see here that the delta reads 50. It means that for every 1 rupee, the underlying moves up by, I gain 50 rupees. Right? That's what the meaning of delta. Delta is, you can actually read it here. There is a good explanation here. Change your PNL. After one day, if nothing else changes, for example, sorry, not theta, delta is change in your PNL with one rupee change in stock price if nothing else changes, right? So, this is 50 rupees, which means that for every one rupee underlying goes up by, you make 50 rupees, which is exactly what happens even in the futures, right? For every point, you get 50 rupees. So, an ITM option is actually a future. So, then the question becomes, ki boss, hum ITM option Q kare. There is a very good use case for that. And the use case is this ITM option. If you want to trade, costs only 29,500 rupees. If you want to trade a future, it will cost you one and a half lakh rupees. Now, ITM option is a cheap way to trade a future if you want to trade a future, right? But of course, ITM option is no longer about option. It is actually about future. Why? Because you can see that pop is 50%. If you actually add a future, you will see the pop of a future is also 50%. Why? Because that's exactly a future, right? Now, ITM option obviously has a huge downside, 29,500. Look at this, right? If I trade an 18,600 call, it's only 3000 rupees and it only has a probability of profit of 32%. But if I do an ITM option, probability of profit is 50-50 and premium is only 30, I mean, it's much more 30,000. This is basically a future. A lot of people trade ITM options instead of futures because trading a future costs uh, 1 lakh, ITM option costs only, you know, uh, 30,000. Again, if you, so then the question is, boss, why not trade an option? Why trade a future option? You don't want to trade because you don't, if you're buying option, you have to pay uh, theta, vega, all of that, right? An ITM option, if you look at it, has zero theta, zero vega, zero. You can see this, right? All of this is zero. Theta is zero, gamma is zero, vega is zero. So you're practically not trading an option. You're trading a future. So if you are a pure directional player and you don't want to deal with things like Greeks and DK and Theta and Vega and all that boss. Also, if I buy a call option today, if market doesn't go anywhere, I lose like money for, you know, Theta. If you have all that concerns and if you just want to do direction, buy an ITM option. It's a full legit thing. There's nothing scammy about it. You can do a buy, but you have to understand that. So Rahul is asking a question. Why would anyone trade futures? Rahul, that is an excellent question, my friend. I don't know because Futures is also much more expensive from an STT angle. I'll tell you one more problem. I, but there is one problem in ITM option. They are not the most liquid things around. Right? If you actually look at bid offer, there is actually a 6 rupee bid offer. I mean, probably during the market it will be better. But ITM options are not very liquid. So I'm just going to write that down. You know, uh, I'll just introduce a new slide because I didn't... Uh, prepare for this slide but let me just add a new slide right because this is kind of in the middle i realize this so itm option is a future this is the first thing more expensive than otm way more expensive uh, no theta, no gamma, no vega. Transaction charges are lower, obviously. And here's the catch. This is important. Liquidity might be low. And you have to understand that and live with, live with it. But I'm going to make things more interesting now. See, here's the thing, right? Let's say, sorry, one second now. Uh, I don't know which thing is getting shared now. Ah, sorry, different screen is being shared. I'll just share the right screen. So, there's some screen management happening here. So, ITM option is a future. 
it is more expensive than otm it has no greeks transaction charges are lower liquidity might be bad okay now i am going to introduce something much more fun at this point before that i'll just read the comments the risk of course is you will lose the entire you know you lose the entire premium which is huge so it is a much much riskier proposition than futures but if you are a pure directional player you should consider itm than doing uh, this thing uh, futures now i'll make things a little bit more interesting right so now we have seen one problem that this itm option is very expensive it's around 500 rupees but now let's look at a very different use case ஒரே <laughs> uh delta says avarish is saying somebody smoke something green no i don't smoke anything green i don't speak smoke anything uh keyboard warrior is saying wtf all options are greeks no bro that's a thing it, i know i know it's a new concept for a lot of people but itm options deep itm options have zero theta zero vega zero gamma that is the reality of it it has delta and delta equal to 1 i'll just show it in builder again a deep itm option has a delta of i mean what which is multiplied by lot size is 50 so if i just turn off this number right uh, you i think i have already started a controversy here if i store don't multiply by lot size you can see the delta is one right dk is happening because futures premium is eroding that's a different story ignore the dk but an itm option has delta of 1 theta of 0 gamma of 0 vega of 0 i mean that that is the truth and you know no matter how much ever we uh, disagree with that a deep itm option has you know zero a greeks impact so so but then the point is this right this is a very itm option 500 rupee premium to matlab yaar there is a problem right rahul is asking don't deep itm options have theta dk no they don't they don't have theta dk deep i mean really really deep so i'll just show you once again uh, how deep is deep oh my god how deep <laughs> every time i hear how deep i i fill it with how deep is your love so 8300 option for example right 15th june so 8600 option has a delta of 0.5 that's atm if i go to an 8400 the delta has yaar ye delta why is it showing one one second i'll just multiply by lot size so that will give me a non rounded number okay this is weird one second oh so, so sorry this is on the last day so look at this right so 18400 ce has a delta of uh, 42 if i go to an uh, 18300 ce it is uh, 46 if i go to an 8200 ce it is 48 if i go to 18000 it is 49 which is practically 50 which is practically what delta 1 equal to 0.98 is what we'll just round it and agree on this right but if you look at an 18600 call delta is 0.55 right so this is half delta that is one delta because futures have one delta deep itm option which is 80000 call is practically a future now now here's the thing right so this is useless information because i am just telling you that boss there's a cheaper way to trade futures uh, at only 50000 rupees uh, 30000 rupees but yeah 50000 rupees is a lot right uh, sorry 50000 is 500 into 50 that is almost uh, uh, it's a lot of money right how much is 80000 So thirty thousand rupees, right? Eighteen thousand. This I'm asking you to pay thirty thousand rupees to trade a future. That is tricky, but we have to do some interesting stuff, right? Because obviously interesting. Now here's the interesting stuff. If you go very near the expiry date, right? And this is very critical. And and please understand this concept. I'll just put it on the this thing uh, slide again, and I'll. remove my face and this time i'm going to get this right <clears throat> uh, 
close to expiry even a 100 to 200 point itm option is almost one delta see right now there is enough time left to expiry right because of which we are going to a 600 point option to buy a future but close to expiry one day to expiry or zero day to expiry you will see that <coughs> a 100 point itm option jaise ki if nifty is at 18600 if you buy an 18500 call also it will have a delta of nearly what multiplied by lot size or 50 almost delta right so here's the catch a hundred point itm option with a delta of one has almost zero theta so the entire value is intrinsic value delta is one it will cost only around five thousand rupees and this is where things start becoming crazy if you go to the expiry day and pick up a 100 point ITM or a 200 point ITM, they will be trading for just 5,000 rupees. A 200 point option will all obviously be trading for uh, 200 point equal to 10,000 rupees. So effectively, you can trade a future for, yeah, 10,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees or whatever. So zero delta zero sorry zero theta zero vega zero gamma itm option is going to cost you only five thousand rupees and it is going to act like a future on the expiry day or before the expiry day which simply means that you can now trade future at five thousand rupees now here's another interesting thing right you can also keep a, a stop loss of 5000 rupees for every lot of future 100 point but please don't keep 100 point stop loss at all you should ideally keep like a, a 30 point 40 point stop loss uh, if you're trading close to expiry but you get my meta right see if you want to trade futures you are better off doing this thing so bhavin has asked a very good question here why not so i'll highlight the question so bhavin's question is if we buy atm option two lots isn't it better than buying deep itm one lot bhavin you're right from a delta point of view right but the catch is you are also going to end up paying theta on those two ATMs and you will also have uh, 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 Vega, etc. So if your theta fluctuates, Vega fluctuates, you'll lose money. All I am saying is, boss, if you want to do pure direction, go deep ITM and trade Delta like a future for a fraction of cost uh, of this thing. So keyboard warrior, yes, you're right. Deep ITM has zero extrinsic value, zero time value, which means you're purely trading intrinsic value. I know one more thing which has only extrinsic value. It's called a future. So basically what have we learned? If you want to trade futures for a way, way cheaper cost, basically trade ITM. But of course, that was not our main focus. We are not future traders. We are option traders. So if you pay a high premium, so basically my summary becomes, if you pay a high premium, you will get a high probability of profit and easy break even, but it is poor RR. And this is ITM. ITM or ATM or whatever. If you pay low premium, you will get a low probability of profit, difficult to break even, but when you break even, you will get high RR. This means OTM, right? And of course, deeper the ITM you go, higher your delta. So. The, all these OTM options don't fluctuate much with uh, movement in underlying. Uh, ITM options fluctuate a lot with movement in underlying. Uh, so here's the thing, right? If you want to trade one future, go for one deep ITM. If you want to trade half a future, go for OTM. Sorry, ATM. If you want to trade one fourth of a future, go for a 25 delta, I mean 0.25 delta OTM. So basically you can bet size uh, using options if you don't want to take big futures and all. But of course, this involves theta, DK, Vega and all. So it's not a pure futures play. Of course, ITM is a pure futures play, right? 
so and most of the time right it's better to do see here's the thing right just like icic lombard will always make money on your insurance policy most of the option traders are always focusing on this poor rr but very high probability of success and let's keep making those see it's like this right i don't know if you're old enough for this but in my childhood the guy i hated the most was michael bevan because this every time this dude comes to play i know india will lose against australia in cricket because this guy comes in and always make 60 runs of 61 balls michael bevan 60 not out he'll also be not out right he's a annoying little I mean, you know bugger this guy always makes 60 runs of 61 balls and says okay bye we have won the match data it's like if michael bevan plays in the team it's like a plus 60 runs to the score nobody knows how deadly Michael, see people celebrate uh, Mark Waugh and Steve Waugh and all those bombastic batsmen, right? The most deadly guy in one day cricket. And I kid you not, if you ask me, which is the, who's the most feared player in one day cricket, it is Michael Bevan. No questions asked. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you have heard of this guy. Crazy guy. Every time this guy comes in, walks into a one day international, makes 60 runs out of 61 balls, 59 balls. He'll, he'll never hit sixes and fours, right? He'll never make 60 or 40. He will never make 60 of 100. He will make 60 of either 61 or 62 or 59 or 58 and then stay not out and will go. He was a middle order batsman. I think he used to come at number 5 or 6. Most of the option sellers are Michael Bevan. They are always trying to pick up that signal. They don't try to hit that 6 like Virendra Sevak does with that good RR. And statistically, everybody, right? Statistically, everybody who is in the option selling business for long enough are trying to do this and this is the thing you have to understand you are they are trying to do option selling with risk with d so everybody is aiming for getting good rr and sorry getting good uh, bad rr and high pop so basically option selling is a high pop low rr game it is michael bevan so i'm just making this analogy because michael bevan always always has a high average and if you look at your trading PL as a cumulative average, you have to be Michael Bevan, right? So, obviously, I'm going to summarize this. If you, so this is from a selling perspective, right? Earlier, we were looking at it from a buying perspective. Now, we are going to look at it from a selling perspective, right? Because, see, still now we are just talking about selling, sorry, buying. But things really go to this, you know, poor, uh, poor RR and high pop game once you start selling. So let's start selling, right? So till now we were doing buying, now we'll start selling. But before we start selling, right, we will take a small break. It's 11.37 now. We'll come back at 11.42, right? So I'll see you again at 11.42, five minute break. So, and after that, we'll start with selling, right? So till we meet again, please, uh, you know, Take a walk around, move around, have, some, have a sip of water, get some coffee if you want, etc. etc. So I'll see you in five minutes. All right, we are back. So <laughs> please understand one thing. I talked about how deep in the money options are tradable like futures. I also told you why they are easier to trade. But extremely important point, it's very highly risky instrument. I mean, yeah, of course, if you do buy two lot of ATM, it's like having one deep ATM. But, you know, I'm just saying that it's not, how do I put it? Yeah, if you can trade a future, you can trade a deep ATM. That's all. <laughs> right. Uh, and of course, it's difficult to make money because huh? we talked about option buying so far. There's one problem in option buying. You have to get the direction right. Unless you get the direction right, you will never make money in option buying. And it is not easy to get direction right people might say ki nahi nahi hamare paas magic levels formula ye hai blah hai to dissolve bs nobody can predict direction right uh, all every time we can be right eight out of uh, you know 10 times right that is good enough but if somebody tells you they've got something which always predicts direction please understand that they are going soon going to sell a course <laughs> but uh, so i'll tell you how to show, select an itm option uh, using option chain. So just to, you know, uh, here, kaha gaya, settings, yeah. I have to show LTP view. I'll show intrinsic value. Sorry, I'll show time value and intrinsic value. 
So this is how you can select a deep ITM option, right? So you can see time value here, right? The lower the time value, the more ITM it is. So you have a time value 77. This is, uh, so check this out, right? This is a time value of 77. This is a time value of 65, 46, 33. It is keeping on going. Four rupees is a time value for 18,150. And I'm, I'm sure if I scroll up more, See, at 18,800, the time value is only three points. This is a deep ITM option. You can confirm it with Greeks also. At 18,000, the delta is uh, 0.97, which is as good as one, right? Delta one is future. This 0.97 is as good as this thing. Theta is minus 1.6 and one rupee theta. So, you know, this is what I meant. Now, now let's go to selling. Why? Because we don't want to be buyers who are always dependent on the mercy of, uh, you know, direction to make money. So, like I said earlier, we compared a call input and we understood that selling always has a higher probability of profit. And now the question is, selling at all is fine, but what do I sell? At what strength? So again, we are going to go to Builder and illustrate the comparison between which strike to sell. You know, like basically OTM, deep OTM, Deep ITM, right? because uh, it's not about which strike, which whether you're selling, right? It's about which strike to sell and it's also about which expiry to sell. So we'll start the first layer, which is which strike to sell. Again, uh, this is a fairly simple module. We're just building. Manu just saying you have selected future intrinsic value. They never know it has to be futures intrinsic value. It can't be spot intrinsic value. Everybody thinks intrinsic value is priced of the spot. It is a big misconception. Go to any trading floor and ask anybody. Nobody prices options from spot. Everybody prices options for future. Your intrinsic value and time value has to be calculated off the future and not of the spot. Uh, it is one easy way in which I distinguish whether somebody understands uh, the, the like every time some I go I evaluate a person on their webinar which they conduct right I just see if they understand this uh, intrinsic value time value spot concept versus futures concept very surprised to know that a lot of people still follow uh, spot it's not spot it's futures um, and so okay anyway, let let me go back so now Shazib was saying please upgrade my PC dude I am running a ThinkPad X1 Carbon Boss, how can I upgrade this PC? There's, there are very few things which you can upgrade above this. But, but why did you say uh, you want to... Uh, why did you want to say you want to upgrade the PC? Anyway, so I'm going to do three trades, right? They're all going to be selling a put. One is an ITM put, which is 18,800 put. The other is a ATM put, which is roughly 18,600. And the third is an OTM put, which is 18,200. 400. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Obviously, 18,400 is the poorest put right why just thousand rupees here thousand rupees ka premium no joy so one second i have to sell this put i'll just sell it this is four thousand rupees not bad and this put is hopefully i'm sharing the right screen right yeah i'm sharing the right screen so 18,800 ka put gives you 11,000 rupees proper, but you only have a 50% chance of success. This is very important. Only 50% chance of success because the break even is like right here. But if you sell, if you tell yourself, boss, I will be happy with 4,000 Then the pop improves. It is six, 66%. That's not bad at all. Right? Now, if you go deeper, 18,400 put, that is 85% probability of profit. Break even is pura 1% below. Right? But you only make 1000 rupees, which is 
a return of hardly uh, 1.3%, right? Now, here's the thing. Return of 10%, Sevag. Return of 4.4%, I don't know who's the middle guy. Return of 1.3%, this is Michael Mirren. In fact, you can even go more Michael Mirren. Let's do 18,200 ka put. You are making just half a percent. Yaar, ye thoda jada ho gaya, 8,300 Half a percent, 0.67. Half a percent return a week. So basically, if you know how to sell... My laptop is heating, connect it to charger and keep it in an elevated height. Really, is it? No, yeah, it's very cold actually. I can try to do it, uh, but let me just okay. I'm gonna do what you asked me to do. I'll put a I'll put a book under it if you think that's the issue. My laptop is not heating to the best of my knowledge, but I'll anyway. I've kept it on a book, and you know, hopefully it doesn't affect anything. Okay, I've kept it on a height also. Is it true? Okay, so here's the thing. This is five and half a percent. This is four thousand, four percent. This is ten percent. Most option sellers that you are seeing around uh, are in the territory of this Michael Bevan. No, no, I've not blocked the vents. My block vents are on the side. I don't have any. Uh, Okay, I'll buy laptop cooling pads with fans. I'll, I'll, let me order one. But how is it affecting? I don't understand. Like, is it is it happening? Is something is happening. Is something happening because of my laptop getting it? I don't think it's heated here. I'm not sure why you're saying it's heated. <laughs> Maybe it is network issue. Okay. Anyway, so Kishan, I'm not ignoring any question. It's just that you know I have an agenda of finishing this. If you are going very deep OTM, you will have low profit with a very high probability, right? Basically, again, this is kind of a two-third probability, but you know, half if 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 uh, Nifty goes even 0.3% down, then you are losing money here. This is not a safe option to sell at all, and this is not a safe option to sell at all either. This is a coin toss. This is a kind of a coin toss. This is not a coin toss. You need Nifty to go down 1.5% at 585. Then, then the point is this, right? So I'll tell you what's the practical consideration here. Then to everybody will say, boss, you know what? 1.5% ka ye lenge, badia hai, chaap denge, every week half a percent. The problem with that approach is, see, let's say that you are going to be right most of the times. Let's say you are right four out of five times, right? So let, let's say that you somehow have a system which is right four out of five times. I'm just hypothetically saying you're right four out of five times. If you are right four out of five times in your choice of, let's say you're a good trader, you understand direction, at least you have some edge with which you're predicting the market. Then if you're making this four times, you make 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, 16,000 times. 16,000 you make in four weeks. Four times you get this right. And let's say one week you make that fatal error. And market really decides to screw you, right? And let's say market goes to 18,200 uh, or something, a 2% down. And you can see that I have lost 15,000 rupees here. So let's not make it 2%, let's make it 18,300. So I've lost 10,000. So net net, I'm still up, you know, 6,000 rupees. So once I'm wrong, four times I'm right. So I make plus 6,000 anyway in this trade of OTM, sorry, ATM, right? But if I do this thing, if I am right four times and I'm wrong that one time and it goes to how much is the target? 18,300, right? 18,300. Oh, 18,300 pay, I'm still fine. But let's see, 18,300, I don't lose uh, money. So I'll go to expiry day. 
I won't lose any money, but I have only made four into five hundred and eighty-five, which is roughly two thousand rupees. So, despite the fact that I was wrong, I made two thousand rupees here. But it's better to take this trade because the premium is much more juicier, and you make four thousand rupees every time. But now the catch is this, right? This is very close to your break-even, so you need a system. Where you are able to say, okay, Nifty is going to stay above this level. If you have a system like that, this makes sense, right? You will make much more. Basically, the more aggressive your prediction is, and you are saying that, boss, मेरे को तो पता है इतने ही जाएगा, then you will make much, much, much more money doing this game, right? But whereas if you are saying कि यार इतना दूर नहीं जाएगा, you will make little bit of money. It's not quality money. But I'll tell you where this all breaks. Now look at the eighteen thousand two hundred scenario. Let's say once you make a loss, Sorry. you will lose fifteen thousand rupees here. Basically, you have lost made sixteen thousand in four tries, and you lost once when Nifty went to uh, 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 sixteen uh, eighteen two hundred, right? That's like a how much is that two percent movement? So you have lost fifteen thousand, but net net you are still up thousand rupees here. यहां पे इफ दैट हैपन्स इफ निफ्टी गोज टू एटीन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड यू सॉरी यू लॉस्ट फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज इन अ सिंगल ट्रेड सो हियर इज द प्रॉब्लम राइट यू आर ओनली गोइंग टू मेक सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज एवरी टाइम यू विन सो सिक्स हंड्रेड इंटू फोर माइनस फोर थाउजेंड You actually lost minus twenty six hundred, but in the other case you haven't lost so much. So you see the meta, right? There is definitely a trade off happening. You go far OTM, you hardly make anything, and on one on that one time when you get you know badly hit, you lose everything. Right? It's like you know you say picking picking pennies in front of bulldozer. So you. Sell far OTM, hoping that nothing happens. One of these days, you'll happen, and all the tiny, tiny, tiny winnings you have had will not cover for it. But if you are slightly more, you know, not so, uh, not so far away. I mean, in, in a way, right? I'll I'll just come to that point. In a way, if you are selling very far OTM, you are basically not taking any directional call. You are not taking any. But you are not saying anything. You are just saying, "Hey, far ka base do ga, sahi hai, kuch to." Hey, yoga. That's what you're essentially saying, right? The problem with that approach is this personal philosophy. I know a lot of statistical option sellers will disagree with me. I would rather say that okay, there is going to be some support at eighteen four hundred or something. I am going to sell that eighteen four hundred option aggressively and put a decent stop loss, right? Rather, so I would rather sell eighteen thousand four hundred or eighteen thousand three fifty kind of an option. Uh, So eighty thousand four hundred call, I would rather sell and have a disciplined stop loss and try to make that money, because I will want to put some effort and try to figure out where is the support, what is the directionality, etc. So I would rather find direction and make a directional call, saying that boss, this market is not going to go below eighty four hundred. I am going to sell eighty thousand four hundred put. If it goes near, I'll st stop out and get out. Right? I am going to do that. Rather than saying, "Boss, मेरे को पता ही नहीं है market कहाँ जाएगा," तो मैं जाके eighteen thousand two hundred बेच के चिल मारता हूँ. That is very wrong approach. Like in my opinion, right? I know there are statistical option sellers who do that, but I would rather want somebody to put some effort, figure out some OI car resistance, figure out some chart resistance, find out something about FII data, understand that okay, यार शायद eighteen four hundred. Like, यार you have to have some view, right? You are rewarded for some view you take. You can't say that, boss. मेरे को कुछ आता ही नहीं है इसलिए I'll just do sell दूर का ओटी. What is this? Do then don't trade no. Why are you doing this entire business? If you're trading, try to put at least some kind of research that gives you a seven out of ten times your right kind of an advantage. Then it's fine, right? And if you're wrong, get out of that position. Like for example, all these days we knew that okay, eighteen thousand five hundred is kind of a hard ceiling, and you could have kept on selling eighteen five hundred puts all this while and made made some kind of a money. But if you are going to say that no, no, I don't know anything. What will happen? I will buy eighty thousand base. Then there is no point in that here. So, see, ultimately, people give you money. Market rewards you for having a 
डायरेक्शनल आउटलुक राइट यू कांट से कि बॉस मेरे को डायरेक्शन पता ही नहीं है मैं जाके दूर का बेचूंगा एंड आई मेक मनी इट्स पॉइंटलेस सो बेसिकली द बेटर आई एम ट्राइंग टू ड्राइव इट इज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू डू दैट लॉटरी टिकट सेलिंग फॉर अवे यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी रिवॉर्डेड एवरी टाइम एडिक्वेटली एंड ऑन दैट वन टाइम यू विल लूज मनी यू विल लूज सो मच मनी दैट यू विल विश दैट यू हैड नेवर डन दिस इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस राइट uh shubhaji there is no network issue i just confirmed with my uh, team they are saying all throughout the webinar was fine uh so now again <laughs> we go back to this comparison so otm that is very defensive has a low max profit right it also has a low risk reward because nobody will give you quality money for saying i don't know where market will go therefore let me go sell far out here i shudder at that thought roi is of course low right break even is easy but again it is lazy easy you are thinking that it's easy because two and a half percent yeah two and a half percent is nothing on a bad day market will go there and you'll regret it probability of profit is high but honestly i am not a fan of this business of selling very far otm options and hoping nothing will happen i am a you know 30 delta kind of an option seller where i am happy to take some risk so, so here's the thing right if i find a strong support at around 18500 ish when market is 18600 i'll rather sell this put and sit on it that's my approach right i try to find some kind of a strong support or resistance 100 200 points away and i sell an option which is slightly far away from that and i sit on it happily i don't do this you know for business i i, I just believe that you have to put some effort into finding some kind of a you know uh, technical support or resistance rather than just sell statistical far away option selling it might work for some people but i just don't get it so again uh, if you sell atm all of this is medium if you sell itm please don't sell itm options it is yeah if you're selling itm options you are effective I, mean, i don't know i don't even know if it makes sense right you're playing direction like i really don't know what you're doing here unless you have a strong directional call if you're actively saying that you know market will go up from here then of course you can sell itm put right but itm selling is as good as uh, uh, otm buy <clears throat> yeah i mean i'll just let that sink in a little bit okay probability of profit wise right so basically my practical outlook is that right let's say nifty is at 18600 yesterday right i thought okay maybe nifty won't cross 18500 let me sell a put there and sit on it another way to look at it is for those of you who have seen k kya lag raha market two days back when nifty was hovering around 18800 i said ki boss mere ko lag raha hai kuch to galat hai i'm going to sell 19000 call and sit on it right and i did that right it it's a easier gate play i'm not going to go sell 19500 call it's not worth it 19000 call for a premium of around 100 200 rupees i'll happily do that right so this is my outlook so again when it comes to selling options if you receive high premium receive high premium then you are taking big risk and therefore your probability of profit is low but your disc, break even is uh, diff, it's difficult in, to, from your point of view it can be easily hit and you can lose money but if you do the other thing very low premium you of course have a high probability of profit easy to break even but one black swan event can wipe out a lot of money you have picked up so i had a friend who used to sell a 2 rupee option every time right he used to sell 300 points away 2 rupee option and i used to tell him ki boss aap 50 bar kar lo saal mein ye cheez yaar and you will make 100 rupees right on one day when market goes gaps down 400 points you basically lose your entire kamai for that year like i i couldn't like basically i couldn't digest it right like not my style but i mean of course he is doing very well uh, actually he bought like a fancy but never mind right uh, okay so i am large so basically my meta is the truth is somewhere around slightly otm don't be too otm because it's not worth your time or effort or money don't be atm because it's very risky don't be itm because that's just lunatic uh, slightly otm is where the gold lies right of course we are 
living in an extremely low iv environment so option premiums are super low but uh, uh, but the catch is of course that uh, uh, you know uh, this option is going to be uh, it's going to be very tough to manage an itm option right uh, so let's go to the next section which is now we are reaching spreads i don't know how much time we have we have half an hour one second now. Okay, so now we come to the concept of spreads, right? And this is where fun starts. And I'm going to, I know, I know we don't finish it this time, um, but we'll try to cover as much as we can and then we'll give some homework and then we'll see what happens. So obviously I'm going, so I'll just do one thing today. I'll just compare a put spread and a call spread and leave it there without doing anything further, right? So I'm going to do, two things, a bull call spread and a bull put spread. And I'm going to delete all these annotations, everything. Okay. So here's the thing. So what's a bull call spread? It's very simple. Uh, so before we go to uh, Comparison, we'll just understand what's a bull call spread. A bull call spread is simple. <coughs> you think that Nifty will go up, right? So you will buy a call option, 18,550 call option. But you don't think that Nifty will go up beyond 18,750. You're like, boss, it's not So you're saying, Nenim, I don't want any upside above 18,750. So one second, I'll just change my screen. Yeah, yeah, so sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for uh, telling me. Just changing the screen again. Okay. So what's the bull call spread? Basically, bull call, op call option is 18550 you buy, and that's that. The spread is you buy 18550, and then you sell 18750, saying that, yeah, right? I'll illustrate it better with a longer term spread, right? Because short term spread, may you don't really see the benefit of that like that. So here's the thing, right? If you're buying a 29th June 18550 call option, and your two week target, 20 day target is around 83, uh, 18,900, let's say, is your uh, uh, target, or 18,800 is your target. If you buy this call, you'll end up paying 10,000 rupees for this uh, call option, right? So you are saying, boss, where's it be 1800 It won't go. So you know, let me just uh, uh, do this. So I sell at 18,800. I say that, boss, I don't anyway think that it is going to go 18,800. Not too much about that. So why pay for that? Let me get some premium back. So you make it a spread. You basically get back some premium with 83. So the important point is, if you look at the max loss, this is almost 11,000. But if you add this, it is 6,500, right? 11,000 and 6,500, humongous difference. And in percentage terms, it's almost 30, 40% cheaper. So the, and also, right? See, it's not like you'll always be right. If you are wrong, you will lose one second. Huh? So this is uh, six thousand. The other is eleven thousand very big difference and that's not uh, that's significant because see on the occasions you're wrong with the other thing you lose 11,000 on the occasions you're wrong with this thing you lose only 6,000 the other thing of course is and this is something which I do uh, once in a while so let's say you did the call spread right and nifty goes down so you lose money on the buy call you will lose uh, gain money on the sell call after it goes let's say 100 points or 200 points or something right and then you think it's going to bounce back from there. You can actually get out of the sell call and then keep the buy call. That's another way of looking at it, right? So spread also allows you that flexibility. But basically the meta is spread decreases your uh, outlay 
which is your cost is lower the other thing is pay attention to the probability of profit a spread a naked call requires a 1% move to break even whereas a call spread only needs a 0.6% move half a percent move to break even so break even wise also this is better obviously probability of profit wise it's better because 46% is spread 37% is call etc etc right but i'll also tell you something very important if you are going to do the same thing on a 15th june spread right at some point realistically you have to start asking the question should i even sell the second leg so let's say you are taking the same trade for 15th june right if you don't do the if you do the naked call it is 5000 if you do the spread it is 4500 so it's like 10% difference that's not significant because see and, and ultimately look at this right the cost of this 80800 otm call is only 20 rupees yes i agree it's like a 20% saving but at some point you have to ask yourself we are 20 15% ish saving at some point you have to ask yourself dude like do i care like so there is a point at which making it a spread is not attractive short term expiry low iv environments are not attractive so look at this right for example 80900 you are thinking it will go to 80900 and you are trying to save 7% cost by selling this 18,900 call. It's showed here. If you're actually thinking 18,900, it will go, right? You might as well think it will go to 19,000 and keep it open, right? Basically, why are you giving away a 100 point upside for what could be potentially just a uh, 7, I mean, 7 rupee cost? So you have to really think about, am I saving significant money? If it is not significant money, then don't really do a spread. See, a lot of people say always do spread, always do. I get that. I am very pro spread when it comes to, you know, trading. But realistically, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do a spread simply because the cost you're saving is too less. Short term expiry and like, you know, far OTM, uh, low IV, etc. It doesn't make sense. Whereas if you look at uh, uh, 29th June, it is making much more sense because the cost is significant, right? It's 25% of your outlay. Look at this spread, right? 29 June. It's 50 rupees worth, the 8900 call. So this is significant. Uh, you're saving quite a lot of money. If you do 18,800 spread, again, that's significant. Almost a third of your cost is saved. But far away, it doesn't make sense, right? So every time you do a spread, Look at the cell leg and ask yourself, how much am I saving with this cell? And how much am I uh, improving my break even and probability of profit? Super important point. Don't blindly do spreads. There are 